Unveiling Strong Delusion, Video 38, Hebrew Cognates That Shouldn't Exist, Part 3. In my last video, I said my next video would discuss Byzantium in Europe. I will return to that subject in the video after next. Instead, this video continues showing Hebrew cognates in other languages that should not exist. I decided this to continue this theme because I think languages, language plays one of the most important roles in our deception and sub, subjugation. My next video will continue the cognate theme, but will focus on one so-called Hebrew word with great theological importance. This word has a perfect homonym in a modern European language that has deep symbolic, symbological significance. As in the prior videos, when I use his work, I will credit Allison Emery Drake, SCM, MD, PhD, in his book, Discoveries in Hebrew, Gallic, Gothic, Anglo-Saxon, Basque, and Other Caucasic Languages from 1907, by noting discoveries in New, uh, Hebrew with the page number. Cambridge University's Classical Review in 2009 panned this book, which begs the question of why Cambridge would review a book more than 100 years after its publication when the author can't respond. Let me remind the viewers that no one knows the actual pronunciation of Biblical Hebrew and that our modern pronunciation comes from the Masoretes, a vague group led by the Asher family who supposedly spent three or four hundred years figuring out Hebrew pronunciation. Asher derives from a verb meaning to be blessed, Strong's Hebrew 835. I think it relates to the goddess Asherah, or Ash Asherah, who, who some scholars refer to as the concert of Yahweh. While Asherah generally has a negative connotation in the Old Testament, scholarship shows that in the Septuagint it may have a more positive light. The words translated in Deuteronomy 33.2 as, quote, from his, Yahweh's, right hand came a fiery law, might mean Asherah by his right hand. Richard Worthington, the Hebrew goddess Asherah in the Greek Septuagint, Feminist Theology, October 18, 2018. Cognate 1. Metal, cognate with metal. In Hebrew, metal means a hammered bar, wrought iron bar, wrought metal rod, Strong's Hebrew 4300, and also the theological word book of the work word book of the Old Testament, 1186. An obvious cognate with English and Spanish metal, Italian metallo, etc. His bones are like beams of bronze, his ribs like bars of iron, qui metal barzel, Job 40.18. Cognate 1a, barzel, iron, Brazil. His bones are like beams of bronze, his ribs like bars of iron, Ki metal barzel. Barzel means iron in Hebrew, Strong's Hebrew 1270. And here we have it in Hebrew, the B R Z L. Uh, and the little markers here give us the vowel sounds. And remember, the vowel markers came from the Masoretes, and we have good reason to doubt their accuracy. The consonants B, R, Z, L easily could read Brazil just by moving the vowels. Does the name Brazil come from Barzel, and should we pronounce Barzel as Brazil? 1b, Barzel Iron. In 1872, the Paraiba text appeared in Brazil containing Hebrew or Phoenician texts, basically the same. And it has a mysterious appearance, a magical one, much like the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi texts uh, appeared magically in the 1940s. Scholars at the time decried it as a forgery, but modern scholars, particularly Cyrus H. Gordon, argued for its authenticity. Riddles in History, Cyrus H. Gordon, in the English edition, pages 71 to 92. The text tells of a sea voyage from Ezion Geber to Brazil by a group of ten ships, 
most of which did not make it to Brazil. Did these voyagers or others like them give Brazil its name? Did the ancient Phoenicians, Hebrews, travel to Brazil regularly for iron ore, or did they smelt the iron in Brazil? 1C. Barzell, Brazil's world's largest iron mine. About 2,000 kilometers to the west of Paraiba lies the Carajas Mine, the world's largest iron ore mine. According to miningtechnology.com, quote, the Carajas region boasts the richest reserves and concentrations of iron ore anywhere in the world and was discovered entirely by accident in the late 1960s when a U.S. steel helicopter was forced to land on a hill in the area to refuel. Surveyors on board noted the barren state of the hill and subsequently discovered that the iron content was as high as 66%. Luckily, not only did the helicopter have to land randomly in a giant rainforest, but it carried U.S. steel surveyors and it had a helicopter refueling station. All decent people should believe this story. And here on the eastern coast of, of Brazil, we have Paraiba. And here, 2,000 miles to the west, we have the Carajas mine in the middle of this giant rains forest that extends all the way up to Colombia, all the way west of Ecuador and Peru, and they landed randomly there and found it. Cognate 2, Maal. Cognate with Maal, Malo, Mala, Malus, Meali. In Hebrew, Maal means to commit a trespass, to act unfaithfully, consciously violating religious laws. Cognate with Latin malus, French mal, male in Italian, evil, Gaelic meal, deceive, beguile, defraud, and cheat. And in Italian, maldetto means cursed, as does maldito in Spanish. And 2a, mal. In almost all the biblical occurrences, Ma'al designates the conscious breaking of religious laws. In this sense, it reflects the Italian il male, or le mal in French, meaning evil, also Spanish and Latin. If a soul sin and commit a trespass, Ma'al, against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbors in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or hath deceived his neighbor. So you can see that's the in the sense of evil. Mashal, cognate with marshal. In Hebrew, mashal means to rule, have dominion, reign, governor, governor. Cognate with English marshal and French marechal, which mean or have meant high officer of the royal court, commanding officer of an army, officer in charge, charge of a household, constable. Many languages and dialects of languages drop the R sound. English has many non-rhotic speakers, meaning speakers who often and sometimes always leave off the R sound. Na, cognate with now. In Hebrew, na means now, pray, beseech. Cognate with English now. Exodus 10.11, now go, not so, not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord for that ye did desire, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Na'ar, or nar, cognate with nar. In Hebrew, nar means to growl, cognate with English nar, which means to growl. They shall roar together like lions, they shall growl, na'ar, nar, like lion's cubs. Nafal, cognate with fall. In Hebrew, nafal, or nafal, means to fall, or fall down. Cognate with English fall and Anglo-Saxon felon, or fallen. I'm not sure how to pronounce Anglo-Saxon. And that's in Discoveries of Hebrew 2.10. And nal, cognate with nail. In Hebrew, nal means to lock, bolt, shoe, furnish with sandals. Cognate with English nail, German and Dutch nagel, meaning nail, and Anglo-Saxon nagel, nail or peg, and discoveries in Hebrew had the Anglo-Saxon there at page 210. Shoemakers or cordwainers use nails to attach the sole to the body of the shoe, 
Interesting that both shoes and people have bodies and souls. And that idea of, has a interesting version of it in the Mabagenoan, uh, uh, sorry, I'm uh, mispronouncing that, uh, the, the Gallic uh, legends. The science fiction writer Cord Wainer Smith in real life went by Paul Linebarger. And in 1948, while a professor at Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies wrote the book Psychological Warfare. And of course, Event 201 came out of Johns Hopkins, the, the precursor of the COVID lockdown. Cord Werner Smith grew up in China and became the godson of Sun Yat-sen, known as the father of the nation and revered in both mainland China and Taiwan for overthrowing the Qing dynasty in 1912. Sun Yat-sen coincident, coincidentally studied in Hawaii as a teenager, just like Barack Obama. Quote, there is a music which underlies all things. We dance to the tunes all our lives. Though our living ears never hear the music which guides us and moves us, happiness can kill people as softly as shadows seen in dreams. We must be people first and happy later, lest we live and die in vain. From Cordwainer Smith's Under Old Earth, a book about human-animal hybrids, which I think is, plays an important actual role in our occulted history. They live in a stupor and they die in a dream. It is not a good dream, and if they awaken, they will know that we are people too, the dead lady of Clown Town. Dolores Abernathy, I am in a dream, Bernard Lowe. Would you like to wake up from this dream? Dolores, yes, I'm terrified. Westworld, Season 1, Episode 1. And Paul from the Black Sheep Researcher did a very interesting video on the symbology of Westward, which I think makes worthwhile viewing. Neshama, cogn cognate with nose. In Hebrew, neshama means breath. And again, we got these, uh, the sounds from the Masoretes. As far as this could say, nose ama, because this dot over the trident here, which is the S sound, uh, shin, uh, gives us the SH sound, and it could just as easily have an S, just an S sound. Cognate with English nose, Latin nasus, Anglo-Saxon nosu, or nasu, discoveries in Hebrew 2.16. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath, neshama, of life, and man became a living soul, Genesis 2.7. I think the ama ending may refer to the soul as in the French am or Spanish alma, the breath of life. Masak, cognate with mask. Masak in Hebrew means a covering, a rag, a screen. Cognate with English mask, Italian mascara, French masquer, Spanish mascara. And here we have the, the mask twins who brought us our, all our freedom. And 10, mistar, cognate with mystery. In Hebrew, mistar means a secret place or hiding place. Cognate with English mystery, Italian mistero, Spanish misterio, French mister, Latin mysterium. Salad, cognate with Latin salio and salto. In Hebrew, salad means to spring up, jump, leap. It should say leap, not lean. Cognate with Latin salto, meaning to dance, and salio meaning to spring up. Discoveries in Hebrew 2.22. Cognate with Italian saltare, and Spanish saltar, meaning to jump. We get this word's pronunciation from the Masoretes. The three letters, Samek, Lamed, Dalet, or SLD, could read Salto just like, like in, Latin, in the Latin, because a D can read like a T, and an O sound could follow the consonants. 12. Shelet, cognate with shield. In Hebrew, Shelet means shield, cognate with English she, shield. The T and D sounds interchange in many languages. The Masoretes gave us the vowel pronunciation. The S, H, L, T sound could have a pronunciation just like shield. 
eber or ever cognate with over. In Hebrew, eber or ever means over, across, cognate with English over. The B and V sound interchange in Hebrew and many other languages, particularly Spanish. Hebrew developed, I think, in the Ebro Valley in Spain. The Masoretes gave us the initial E sound. The original word could have sounded just like over. Up or up, cognate with up. In Hebrew, up or up or off means to fly and birds are flying creatures. Cognate with English up. The cough in Hebrew can have either the P or F sound. Up, up, and away. And here the movie Up. Allah, ascend. Cognate with Allah, wing. In Hebrew, Allah means to ascend, go up, climb. Cognate with Latin, Italian, and Spanish, Allah, meaning wing, and with French, Ail, for wing. 16. Et, time, season. Cognate with etos and ete. In Hebrew, et means time or season. Cognate with Greek etos, meaning year, and French ete, meaning summer, a season of the year. 17. Anak, cognate with neck. In Hebrew, anak means necklace or neck pendant. Cognate with English neck and with Anglo-Saxon necka. Discoveries in Hebrew 240. Atse, backbone, cognate with ass, and basque, atse. In Hebrew, atse means backbone or spine or sacrum. Cognate with basque, atse, the exact same word, the back part, posterior part, and with English ass. See discoveries in Hebrew, 241. Akar, sterile, cognate with basque, agar, sterile. In Hebrew, agar means sterile or barren. Cognate with bas agor, meaning dry, unproductive, sterile. Atar, cognate with atar. In Hebrew, atar means the odor or incense or a suppliant. Cognate with English atar, a fragrant essential oil typically made from rose petals. The Arab conduct atara means to slaughter for sacrifice. Theological word book of the Old Testament, 1722a. The smell of sacrifices pleased Yahweh. Quote, and when the Lord smelled the, ble the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. Genesis 8.21 and see Judges 11, Jephthah's daughter, and see also Agamemnon's sacrifice of his eldest daughter, Iphigenia, to Artemis. 20a, Atar, cognate with Atar. Atar from rose petals has deep symbolic meaning. The rose symbolizes the neophyte and covertly symbolizes human immolation. The rose's thorn symbolizes Sirius, the dog star, and the night demon, or tooth fairy. The neophyte engages in human sacrifice. And if anybody wants more, much more information about this idea, I would recommend Pierre Sabak's book, The Murder of Reality, a very good book. And I think you can get it on his website. Uh, PierreSavak.com, I think it is. In England, the white rose symbolizes York or Yadak, the moon, and the red rose symbolizes Lancaster, just as the Egyptians had the white crown and red crown. In Eastern Europe, the rose symbolizes the vampire. Prince Charles claims kinship to Vlad the Impaler, who they say drank blood. For overt human sacrifice in the human testament, Old Testament, read the story of Jephthah and his daughter in Judges 11. A very disturbing story. Lachak, cognate with lick. In Hebrew, lachak means to lick. Cognate with English lick and German lecken. Discoveries in Hebrew 183. Interestingly, the blue Letter Bible online, Strong's Hebrew 3897, recognizes the German cognate, but not the English cognate. Milhama, cognate with military. 
In Hebrew, milhama means war or battle, cognate with mil iteria. Military derives from mil, miles, or today, miles, a name in Eng the English language, soldier. Hama, hama, the last part of milhama, means to war. So milhama could mean a roaring soldier. Quote, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name, Exodus 15.3. In Hebrew, the verse reads, Yahweh ish milhama, Yahweh shemo. Now, this verse has really created a lot of scholarly inquiry, but mostly for the idea of what's called uh, two powers in heaven. And for instance, a scholar named Alan Siegel wrote a book on that called Two Powers in Heaven. But I think more interesting, and another scholar named Mauro Biglino, M-A-U-R-O-B-I-G-L-I-N-O, -I -I an Italian scholar who unfortunately only writes in Italian. I don't think any of his work has been translated into English. He does have a YouTube channel with quite a few subscribers, but only in Italian. Uh, he points out that the verse says, the Lord is a man, ish, and ish in Hebrew always means a male human being. So the Lord, Yahweh, because this word is Yahweh in the, in the Hebrew, is a man, is a ish. So not a god, but a man, like human beings, maybe with longer life, but a, but as in the Greek mythology, we know that the, these so-called teoi, or gods, as translated by theologians, can suffer and die. And we also know that from Psalm 82, that says the, the sons of God can die like humans. And the forces of Yahweh under Moses, Joshua, and others engaged in war without mercy, repeatedly exterminating, exterminating every man, woman, and most children. Haram, which I had as a cognate of harm in a prior video. To this day, I think military intelligence agencies play a major role in the ongoing deception. Milhama, cognate with military. Scholars say the word milhama, or war, derives from the word laham, which means make war, fight, devour, to eat. I think the forces of Moses and Joshua engaged in cannibalism on a massive scale, and the word laham means both war and devour, because during war they devoured their victims. I will make a video on this and the many reasons I think they engaged in cannibalism. As I have discussed in previous videos, I think the events in the Torah and Joshua occurred to a large degree in Europe in what we call the late Middle Ages or early Renaissance, but perhaps much closer to our times, maybe three, even four hundred years closer. Laban or Lavan, an Italian Lavano. In Hebrew, Laban or Lavan, interchangeable B and V sounds, means white. Labano in the Italian Bible, Bibbia, which could read Lavano. Cognate with the Italian verb lavare, to wash, which conjugates to Lavano in the third person plural, whitewash. It also refers to Laban, the brother of Rebecca, children of Betuel. In video 32, called Oedipus, Akhenaten, and Betuel, I speculated about the identity of these three men in history, which would make Laban and Rebekah descendants of the pharaoh Akhenaten. Luke 33.3 supports this idea by putting Aminadab, a name for Akhenaten, in the lineage of Jesus. See my videos on Jesus in the Old Testament. Laban also relates to the moon, as Hebrew has a second word for moon, Lebana, for white. 23a, Lavano or Lavano, in Italian Lavano. In video 26, titled Jacob, I identified the biblical Jacob as Jacopino della Scala, the founder of the ruling house of Verona, the Scaliger family. Just like the biblical Jacob, Jacopino della Scala traded in wool. Scala means ladder, as in Jacob's ladder, one of the most important biblical symbols. Jacob traveled to Laban's house, which I believe existed in Lavagno, Italy, a municipality 12 kilometers east of Verona. Joseph Josephus Scaliger, the man Anatoly Fomenko, credits with falsifying much of our history, descends from Jacopino della Scala. 
As I will discuss in future videos, I think Jesus spent a lot of time around Verona, particularly near Lago di Garda, west of Verona, Italy's largest lake where super rich people live. And it's a very popular vacation uh, resort area in Italy because it's a very beautiful lake with just very beautiful towns around it. 23b, continued with Laban. While on the subject of Laban and Jacob in Verona, I want to insert a tidbit of information that bolsters the case and wouldn't make a full video. Jacob and his two wives left Laban's house, so Jacob went on his way, and the angels, Malachi, of God, Elohim, met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host, and he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And that's Genesis 32, 1 to 2. The King James Version of the Bible, uh, the Bible of many true believers, did a very bad job translating 32, 2, whether deliberately or not. The word translated as host, Mahane, means a military camp. And the word transliter transliterated from Hebrew, Mahanaim, should read two camps or camps. The im ending makes plural the singular Mahane. On the way out of the Verona area, can we find two military camps that date back at least to the late Middle Ages? Just 28 kilometers south of Verona, in the Mantova, Mantua region, lie Castrum Bonifixum and Castrum Belfortis, two Roman forts known collectively today as the Count of Castel Belforte. And here we have driving directions from Verona to Castel Belforte, and, and I think it's very interesting. You have three different ways you can go, and each one of them takes 33 minutes, a very special number. And here's an interesting post. I think this postcard is from 1906, but I don't remember, of Castel Belforte. And it's one of the only pictures I could find online of this town. Several times I have mentioned that U.S. military bases appear in important hidden historical locations. The U.S. military used to house the headquarters of CTAF, the Southern European Task Force, at Caserma Pasolacqua in Verona, a former Roman fort. Nearby in La Cisse on Lake Garda, the military had an officer's resort and hotel for visiting officers from around Europe. I think the U.S. military ran Operation Gladio from Verona, but I have no evidence for this thought. Sharon Tate's father, Paul Tate, worked as an officer at Verona. I think she may have started her movie career as an extra in various pirate-type B-movies filmed at the southern end of Lake Garda in the town of Pesquiera. And here we have a picture of the entrance to Camp Pasolacqua, or Caserma Pasolacqua. You can see U.S. Army headquarters. But here, very interestingly, we have, this is called the Lion of St. Mark. And you can see they have a, a, a stone version of this in Venice. And St. Mark, I think, might, may refer to Mark Antony, the Roman uh, uh, leader uh, who married Cleopatra. And here we have a Roman, Romanesque castle in La Cisse, Italy, where the U.S. officers had their uh, Lake, Lake Garda resort. And you can see this has some historical importance. Exactly what? I don't know. 24. Madad, cognate with Gallic, made. In Hebrew, madad means to measure or to mete out. Cognate with Gallic maid to weigh, Gothic mitan to measure, Anglo-Saxon metan to measure, measure, and Latin meteor to measure. And that's discoveries in Hebrew 186. 25. Mush. Cognate with mush. In Hebrew, mush or mush means to depart, remove. Cognate with English mush said to sled dogs when the driver wants them to depart. Or parents say to their children when they want them to depart. Makel, cognate with Basque, makila. In Hebrew, makel means a rod or staff. Cognate with Basque, makila, which means rod, cane, staff of authority. Marar, cognate with amaro. 
In Hebrew, marar means bitter, bitter bitterness, cognate with Italian amaro or amara, Spanish amargo or armarga, French amer or amer, all meaning bitter. The Masoretes gave us the vowel sounds for this word. For all we know, Hebrew pronounced it amar or amaro or amara, just like it today in Italian, French, and Spanish. Shelet, cognate with shell. In Hebrew, shelet means mollusk shell, which most biblical translations have rendered as onchia, an unknown shelled animal, maybe a sea snail. Cognate with English shell. Shelet appears only in Exodus 30, 34, making it a hop, hop, hopox, that should, be, it is an X, hopox legomenon. Then the Lord said to Moses, gather fragrant spices, resin droplets, mollusk shells, on Chia and King James Version and many others, and galbanum, and mix these fragrant spices with pure frankincense weighed out in equal amounts. And that's the New Living Translation. 28. Panim, cognate with Czech pan. In Hebrew, panim means face, faces, person, or man. Cognate with Czech pan, which means mister. The captain of fifty and the honorable man, panim, the counselor and the skillful artisan and the expert enchanter. The im suffix in Hebrew generally refers to the plural, and Czech has the dative plural, panum. Parad, cognate with Spanish pared. In Hebrew, parad means separated or divided. Cognate with Spanish pared, or wall, which separates rooms, people, and other things. Peri, cognate with pear, pera, and poire. In Hebrew, peri means fruit. Cognate with pear, Italian and Spanish perra, and, La and French poire, meaning pear. Parar, cognate with Spanish parar. In Hebrew, parar means break, destroy, frustrate, invalidate. Cognate with Spanish parar, meaning stop, deter. 32. Pasa, cognate with paso. In Hebrew, pasa means step, march, step forward. Cognate with Spanish paso, meaning step, pass it, passage, way. Pata, Cognate with pateo, pateo and patio. In Hebrew, pata means open, <coughs> wide, spacious. Cognate with patio, an open area in English, Italian, and Spanish. Cognate with pateo in Latin, meaning open or exposed. 34. So, soya, cognate with soil. In Hebrew, soa, sea, soya means filthy. Cognate with English soil, which can mean to make filthy or dirty, and also can mean excrement. Now Joshua was, was clothed with filthy garments, and was standing before the angel. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, soa, and, and that there is no place clean. And you shall eat it as a barley cake, baking it in their sight on human dung, seat. Siun, siun, or sign, cognate with sign. In Hebrew, siun, which could, we could pronounce sign, means sign, signpost, monument, cognate with English sign. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, they shall, then shall he set up a sign, siun, sign, by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamongog, Hamongog. Zutz, cognate with bas zutzi. In Hebrew, zutz means to blossom, shine, sparkle. Cognate with bas zutzi, meaning a torch, which shines. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but on him his crown will shine. Yaziz, because Hebrew declines, uh, 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 or conjugate verbs and nouns. Sapet. Cognate with Italian, tapeto. In Hebrew, tapet or safet means carpet or rug. Cognate with Italian, tapeto, meaning carpet or rug. Tsarat, cognate with bax zauri and, and izuri. In Hebrew, 
Tzarat means leprosy, or more accurately, Bibles have translated as leprosy. We don't know the actual meaning. Cognate with bas zauri, meaning wound, incision, cut, and it's also cognate with bas itzuri, meaning plague, epidemic, infectious disease. 39. Kabal, cognate with Gallic gab or gabile. In Hebrew, kabal means to take, accept, receive. Cognate with Gallic gab, meaning to take, receive, and with gabhail, meaning the act of seizing, catching, receiving, taking. And I apologize to any Gaelic speakers on my inability to pronounce it well. 40. Kadar, cognate with bas kedar or kedar. In Hebrew, kadar means to mourn, to be black, to be dark. Cognate with bas gedar or kedar, meaning soot. Because the G and the K phonemes can sort of intermingle just like what they can with the Q. Video 10 on Barcelona and Jer Jerusalem stated the noun kidron, meaning dark and turbid, derives from kadar. Many biblical passages related to death and mourning involved the Kidron River in Jerusalem, <clears throat> called the Lobregat today in Barcelona. Lobregat means dark, sorrowful, muddy, just like Kadar or Kidron. 41. Kodesh, cognate with goddess. In Hebrew, Kodesh means holiness, sacredness, hallowed, consecrated. Cognate with goddess, god, good. Discoveries in Hebrew, 275. Kane, cognate with cane, in Latin kana. In Hebrew, kane means reed, stalk, cane, bone, balances. Cognate with English cane and with Latin, Latin kana, meaning cane or reed. Katsab, katsab. Cognate with cut. In Hebrew, katsab means to cut, cut off, shear. Cognate with English cut. Kara, cognate with cry, call, Gallic, guar. In Hebrew, kara means to call, call out, cry out, utter loud sound. Cognate with English, cry out and call out. Remember the Masoretes gave us the vowel markers which tell us to pronounce the kof, resh, aleph letters as kara when they could read cry. And the R sound readily converts to the to L as in call. Cognate with Gallic grar, meaning called. Discoveries in Hebrew 13. 45. Mara, cognate with mirror. In Hebrew, mara means mir mirror or vision. Cognate with English mirror. He made the basin of bronze and its stand of bronze from the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered in the entrance of the tent of meeting. The KJV uses looking glass as an Alice. The Mara as mirror appears only in Exodus 38.8 and in other contexts means vision. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. Genesis 46.2 Rava, cognate with a river and Ria. In Hebrew, Rava means water, to drink one's fill, to be drunk. Cognate with English river and Spanish Rio and Latin Rivos. Ri, cognate with rio and river. In Hebrew, ri means moisture. Cognate with Spanish rio, English river, and Latin rivus. Also, with moisture, he, he saturated the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds. Job 37.11 48. Sack, cognate with sack. In Hebrew, sack or sock means sack or sackcloth. Cognate with sack or sackcloth. Tsar, cognate with Tsar, and Gaelic Tsar. In Hebrew, Tsar means a prince, chieftain, captain, ruler, governor. 8269, Strong's Hebrew. Cognate with Russian Tsar, meaning ruler or king, and with Gallic Tsar, meaning noble, brave, brave warrior, hero, oppression, violence, conquer. And it's interesting that uh, the Gallic relates uh, warriors and princes with oppression and violence and conquering and cognate with Persian Shah, with the final R alighted, as happens in many languages, including English. 50. Shakin, cognate with Shak. 
In Hebrew, shakan means abide, dwell, reside, tabernacle. Cognate with English shack, a place to sh abide, dwell, or reside. And shack up in English meaning to abide, dwell, reside in a place. 51. Nahash. Cognate with sa Sankris Naha or Naga. In Hebrew, Nahash means snake or serpent. Cognate with Sanskrit Naga meaning snake or cobra. Sanskrit also uses the word Sarpa for serpent, another cognate. Hindu mythology has a race of semi-divine serpent beings. Hindu mythology associates these beings with body of, bodies of water and with treasure. Greek mythology also associates serpent creatures with bodies of water, such as in the serpent story of Cadmus, and in English in the stories of the Plantagenus, where they claim they derive from a, a, a water serpent creature. In Western mythology, dragons guard treasure. Thank you for watching. The next video will address a supremely important Hebrew word that has a hominin in a modern in in a modern language that opens a new door of symbolic interpretation and that explains the derivation of an important symbol of the Vatican and more. The video after that will address the location of Byzantium or Constant Constantinople in France. I want to thank viewer Armand Rai in advance for this idea and for links to pictures. Check out his channel. I have accumulated so much data, I haven't decided exactly what to show after that, but perhaps I'll make a video identifying Moses and Joshua as important Roman warriors.